Hey dolls and friends, welcome back and thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. If you're new here, my name is Amber Michonne and I do weekly DIYs using majority of Dollar Tree products and other fun things. But if you're not new, hey doll, hey! So today's video, I have for you guys some Kirkland's inspired dupes. I hope that you guys do enjoy this video and also know that you can make some really high-end looking items. Majority of the items I used are from Dollar Tree or they cost less than a dollar or even less than a dollar twenty-five. So yeah, I know that a lot of people love Kirkland's dupes and Kirkland's inspired items, Hobby Lobby stuff. So I plan on doing a little bit more of that here on my channel here in the near future because I absolutely really love liking to do those things. Um, and then sometimes it gives my creative brain a break just a tad bit. But anyways, hope you enjoyed. If you do, give me a big thumbs up. If you're new, love what you see, but also love all things home decor, DIY on a budget. I would also appreciate if you would consider subscribing and hitting the bell right next to it so you're notified every time that I upload. Today's video is also sponsored by Bellway, which is a great supplement if you're looking to get rid of a few of those pesky pounds. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but for now, let's get to the DIYs. For my first DIY, I am recreating this enamel pot wall planter. I have been loving this for the last couple years on Kirkland's and decided I could totally remake it. So from Dollar Tree, I have three of these like succulent wall uh, planters. Um, they are flat on the back side. Then I'm using the um, one gallon paint stir sticks from Home Depot. And then um, you can either use your Waverly chalk paint in white or white spray paint and then I'm going to use my antique wax um, paint color so the first thing I did is cut down the handles on my uh, paint stir sticks and then I just painted them using that antique wax color um, and I just gave it one coat and I used the tip of a foam brush to apply everything on there so it gave it that nice stained look and I didn't have to wipe off a lot of it I was originally going to use these um, craft sticks to my left but I decided against that after I started to assemble everything so I actually used some Jenga block pieces on the right you can see I had already painted them I'm gonna take my L-shaped ruler that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and start to um, align all of my uh, my paint sticks up so like the frame of the sign now and then line up my jenga pieces on the back side and this is what the pots look like after i spray painted them and i did two coats and let them dry overnight um so all i i think i used i think it was um six jenga pieces for each side and i'm going to use this gorilla gorilla glue super glue gel um i picked this up from walmart and just going to place it down where my jenga block pieces are going to be attaching onto the back i decided to use this heavier duty glue so that it can hold the um, pot um, holders up there a little bit better you could use um, hot glue but it's not going to give you that long-term hold that you're looking for so I recommend super glue gel or even some wood glue wood glue takes a little bit longer to dry but if you want a longer hold or a better sturdier hold then I would recommend using that so that's pretty much all I did is just glue it all the way down and did the other side once everything was done it was pretty much time for me to assemble it and as you can see here, it pretty much looks really good and almost identical to the Kirkland's one. It's not as big, but I am satisfied with the look of it. Then I just placed down my uh, planters or my um, pot holders in the place that I wanted them and just used that same um, super glue gel. And then I used some hot glue and attached them. One of them turned out a little bit crooked, but hey, it is totally okay. <laughs> After they were attached to the front, then I just took some jute cord from the crafter square section at Dollar Tree and then just kind of hot glued it down to the back. Um, I mistakenly hot glued it down the first time all the way across. I didn't mean to do that. I, I wanted it to hang a little bit. So all I did was just hot glue it onto the jingle piece in the end of the the um, uh, painter stick. Sorry, I'm losing my words here. And I just wrapped that around a couple of times just so I could hold it and stay really well. And it gives it a nice hold. It, it, it's still hanging up on my wall right now. So yeah, then I took some black um, paint. It's just acrylic paint and the end of a another foam brush and then decided to give it that little detailed work with the um the black that the pots had now i just kind of free handed this 
and I think I did a little bit too much on it. I do like the rim of it being black, but I think I did too much on like the front face of the pots. Um, so I went back over it with some of my white uh, chalk paint and painted it, but you can leave it this way if you want. It, it's whatever you like, you know. This is an inspired video, not exactly a dupe, but just something so you know you can create this high-end decor with just a few dollars because this only cost me maybe five bucks. So yeah, that's all for this. I really like how it turned out and I just think it's really pretty. And even though it's probably two times smaller, it did not cost me $165. <laughs> I could literally make three for less than that price. <laughs>For the next DIY, I was inspired by this mini ladder collage frame. So I'm just going to make mine using a one opening. So from Dollar Tree in the um, Dollar Tree Plus section, I found this easel. It was $3 and then Dollar Tree put out these new wooden like shelves that you can kind of hang um, and it was $1.25. So we're looking at $4.25 right here. So first I just removed one of the wood pieces from the shelving and then I just took apart the easel piece. It's really easy to come apart except for like the small dowels in the in the center which holds everything together. But I took it out with uh, my pliers pretty easily. Um, but yeah, it's easy to take break this apart. And then I'm just taking the three or four. So the four pieces that will work best with what I'm wanting. The two side pieces they are um cut at a diagonal di diagonal <laughs> diagonal <laughs> they're cut diagonally so i had to make sure that um i measured it to where it would actually stand up so i'm actually measuring it on the bottom of my silicone mat and then taking two of the pieces to make that hole in the middle or the frame in the middle and it took me a while to make sure that I got all of the positioning right and that it looked good. You can see here, I keep going back and forth. And then I just kind of mark it down with a pencil. And then I'm going to cut everything down to size using my miter saw box. Because my opening wasn't as big as the wood piece that was going in the middle, I had to um, mark that down to cut that down to size. Once everything was cut and it was ready for me to assemble, I just placed everything back and then I used my super glue gel um, and a little bit of hot glue to put this together. I used super glue gel at first and tried to let it set for a couple of hours, but I think one side didn't set really well, so it came up when I started to do other things with it. <laughs> You'll see here in a minute, I actually try to screw holes into the pieces and the whole thing just kind of falls apart on me but in the end i use a combination of super glue gel and some hot glue um, to keep this together then i'm going to take my waverly chalk paint and white and hazelnut and paint everything so the frame so this is the frame where a photo is going to be attached to i'm just going to paint that white on the front and the sides and i just gave that one good coat and sanded it down after I was done painting it. Then I used my hazelnut color to paint the actual um, ladder frame. So it's just like a two-step ladder. It's really just like a, a faux ladder <laughs> frame. I really like how it turned out. Anyways, I painted that um, using, I gave that two coats. And like I said, I sanded down the edges of my photo frame um, here. And then I took my drill this is funny, y'all. I took my drill to drill holes into where the holes were already for this frame, but then just kind of measured them on the bottom part so I can get them to look even. And then that's where I'm going to tie it off to let it hang in the middle of this ladder piece. Then I am, um, <laughs> this is where the funny part comes, I promise. After I measured where I need the holes for my actual pieces on the ladder then I took my drill and started to drill a hole in it and boop <laughs> there everything falls there she goes I should have done this before but you know hey you live and you learn and you just keep going so I just continued to drill the hole <laughs> where I needed everything hoping that the other side that just had two on it wouldn't fall apart and it didn't but hey I still had to put everything together but alas, it worked out just fine. 
Once I finally had everything together, then I used some of my jute cord and I fished it through my threading needle and I'm going to um, tie it together with the photo frame. So I went under on both of the pieces and then tied it off in a knot um, at the top and in the the top of the photo frame and the top of the first um, easel part of it. You can see what I'm doing. I just did one knot. The holes weren't big enough to do one knot. I mean, two knots. I just needed to do one and it made it look a lot more clean and a lot more simple. And then I just did it on all the other knots as well in the same way. This is why it was important for me to measure where I needed to place my holes on to the um, ladder frame. And once that was done, then this DIY is complete. All you're going to do is stick a picture right onto the front of this um, photo frame and you are good to go. I just, I just use like a little sticky on the back, but you can also put a little thumbtack, a little pin in it. Um, it could be used for a note reminder, you know, whatever you want. But I think it's really cute. Less than five dollars. And yeah, it's very functional. <laughs> So as I stated, this video is sponsored by Bellway. And if you are looking to get rid of a few pesky pounds or even just maintain your weight, or if you've ever gotten a breakout after eating junky food or sweets, for me, it's soda, then Bellway may be able to give you the boost that you need and also help you know what you're putting inside of your body that is, affects your skin. So for me, I feel like I'm always trying to lose just a few pounds every couple of months. And Bellway reached out to me to see if I wanted to try their product in hopes of some good results and even letting you guys know how good I feel on it. And man, what a difference. I completely hate to overeat and the super fiber in Bellway helps keeping you full for a longer time after you eat and can cut cravings so you eat less. That means you end up eating fewer calories in a day, which helps you keep track of your weight. So, oh my goodness, check all of this out. Bellway is an organic, all natural, vegan, keto, paleo friendly, and a gluten-free fiber supplement that contains zero sugar. I said that right, zero sugar. It's flavored with real fruit, so it tastes better than other fiber brands. I promise you, it really does. And the great thing about this is it is totally safe to drink every day, one to three times a day. All you do is simply mix it with your water or blend it with your favorite smoothie and drink it immediately. And it's important to drink more water when you take Bellway Fiber and drinking more water actually has been linked to weight loss. So the two flavors I have with me are gonna be the Pineapple Passion Fruit and the Strawberry Lemonade. The Strawberry Lemonade is part of Bellway's Beauty Super Fiber and Collagen line. So it helps improve your skin from the inside and helps prevent breakouts and it helps your body absorb the new nutrients that help support your skin, hair, and nails. So both of these are super great to have. They truly have some amazing values and you can get three or six tubs of fiber and save a lot. They truly have an amazing value and they have various bundles on their website. So I recommend this product. So if you want to use them, go ahead down to the description box. You will find the link to their website. Also use my code DIYAMBER25 to get 25% off your first order at Bellway. I promise you won't be disappointed if you're looking for a supplement to help you get that radiant skin and help you lose a few pesky pounds. Remember my code DIYAMBER25 to get 25% off your first order at Bellway. All right, dolls let's get back to the DIYs. For my next Kirkland's inspiration, I have this white beaded picture frame. This was super, super easy because you don't really need much but one picture frame and some half wood beads. So from Dollar Tree, I have this photo frame here um, in one of my hands and then I have smaller frames from Dollar Tree. I actually got this in a mystery box like a year ago and I haven't used them. So I'm just kind of showing you different options you can use and different ways you can recreate this um, this uh, project. And then I have a bunch of assorted pop-up stickers and gems uh, from the Dollar Tree, but also my favorite half wood beads. And these are 16 millimeter beads. And my favorite hack is to put them onto some painter's tape um, while you paint them and they will stay down. So I use my Waverly chalk paint and white to paint all of the stickers and the beads as well as my um, half wood beads. Once it was all dry, then I just started removing the half wood beads and then hot gluing them directly onto the frame. I really love this frame because it already has that 
wood chippy distressed look so it was pretty perfect for the look that I was going for because like I said it was already that way so I didn't have to paint it and sand it down and hope for that look it was just already there and then I just hot glued those white painted beads right on there and then I also did um, the smaller ones and I kind of distressed them a little bit with some hazelnut chalk paint and they worked out fine but those are just a couple of different ways you can do this project save yourself twenty dollars it was only it was less than that because all I had to do was buy the frame for $1.25. So yeah, really love how it turned out. Slap your favorite photo in there, your favorite phrase and the smaller ones, and you're good to go. My next inspired piece is this lattice welcome wall plaque and I just recently saw this and I love it. It's only on clearance for $25 so not too bad of a price but I thought it would be really fun to make it. So from the Dollar Tree I have my um, canvas sign, this new welcome word in the crafter score section and then a sink mat all from Dollar Tree. So this only cost me $3.75 to make. So the first thing I did is took my um, black paint. I think this is chalk paint. No, it's actually acrylic paint. And I did two coats of the sink mat. I just painted all around it. You don't have to paint the whole thing. You could probably just measure it out to the uh, frame of the canvas. But I just thought it'd be easy just to paint it all. And then I took the welcome word and used my Waverly chalk paint in white and gave that one good coat. And I also did like inside of like the letters um, because you could see the MDF. Uh, color to it but I just wanted it all white I didn't want you to see any any brown so it took me a little while to do this in a few different <laughs> brush sizes but it all worked out in the end next I'm going to remove the uh, canvas front to the frame so I just took a box cutter and cut down the sides of my canvas and um, just took everything off and just ripped it off of the staples and then just cut down any straggling pieces or frayed pieces that were still there it was actually pretty easy to cut down at this time than it usually is for me to cut down these canvases um then i took my waverly chalk paint and hazelnut and painted this frame and i just gave it one good coat um i don't know why originally i thought that the natural wood color would look right but it just kind of looked a little a little corny or cheesy or cartoonish to me i don't know I don't really like it. I have a specific look of my decor when I do DIYs. I want it to look good in my house. And, you know, I just really like the high end kind of look. So painting it really gave it the color combination that it needed. So once um, I was done with that painting, I just hot glued it directly onto the sink mat. Some pieces came off, so I just had to re-hot glue it, but it was totally fine. And then I just cut off the excess of the sink mat around the frame. And then hot glued the welcome word right onto the front of the frame. I know the Kirkland's one has it on the inside, but hey, this one is just as good. And that's it for this one. I really, really love it. Literally less than $5, even though the other one was on clearance for $25. This could not be beat. So I was really excited and happy to create this. Let me know which one is your favorite. this video if you did make sure you give me a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already be blessed stay safe and i will see y'all on the next one bye okay mommy craft got a lot of stuff you got a picture look at isaiah he's staring at me like Where's the sign